Well, all you fans out there of JoJo, you probably feel the same way I do, where you admire JoJo's gumption, but he's in way over his head. Hi guys, this is Jojo from SC2 News, reporting from a jail cell in New Falls in Prism. Here with me is everyone's favorite evil emperor, the one and only, the cold-hearted, the grim, the witty, Emperor Arcturus Mengsk. Let's find out if he's a badass bad guy in real life as well. A warm welcome to James Harper. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm just fine. Jojo, how about you? <laughs> Thank you. I am swell. Um, Good. Glad to hear it. And I am a witty kind of guy, aren't I? <laughs> awesome. Before we talk about StarCraft... Um, sure, let- before we talk about StarCraft, I'm ready! <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with a few questions about yourself. Like, Tell us sure. a little bit about your career as an actor and voice actor. Um, okay, well, um, uh, uh, I can tell you a little bit about my career. I'll try to keep this, uh, uh, I, I tend to talk too much, so, Jojo, if, if I'm going on too much, you just say, uh, excuse me, we gotta move on now. Um, okay, so, uh, trying to make a long story very, very short, I can tell you I haven't, I'm, I'm relatively a novice when it comes to voice acting. I don't have the the kind of experience and background in voice uh, uh, acting, artistry, as someone like, you know, Robert Clotworthy, Jimmy Rayner has. Um, he's been doing it since he was like 15 years old. Um, my background and experience is really more along the lines of I got my start in, in stage acting, acting, and, and being a classically trained actor, I... Um, I, I really uh, got involved in theater when I was in high school, and then it was put on hold for a few years. Um, and uh, I did some very kind of uh, uh, interesting show busy things when I was uh, uh, when I was in high school. I actually spent a couple of my summers working for uh, an uncle of mine in a traveling carnival in the Midwest, mm-hmm. uh, which is a show business kind of thing, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of on the seamier side, uh, if you will. <laughs> uh, but uh, traveling to county fairs and celebrations and festivals, that kind of thing in Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, a few of the states there. Anyway, um, I was in the Army during the Vietnam era, and when I got out of the Army, I went back to college, and um, I uh, started back in with theater again uh, at my little junior college in Northern California, College of Marin. And I got fully immersed in theater there for like three years and then auditioned for and got accepted into the Juilliard School in New York City. Uh, and it was it was new at the time. The, the program was only going into, matter of fact, I was in the third class in the drama division. Uh, group, they use numbers, they still use numbers today. Group, I think it's like group 45 today or something like that. Anyway, I was in group three. Uh, my most well-known classmate was, is Christine Baranski. Um, uh, who's done many, many television series and, and, and films and, and plays, Tony Award winner and so on and so forth. Anyway, um, uh, so I went there and then I, I was asked by the late, great, amazing John Hausman, legend, icon, John Hausman, to join the acting company, which was an outgrowth of the original class of Julia. And I was there for four years and I worked closely, uh, with Patty Lapone, Kevin Klein, um, and a number of others for, uh, a number of years. Um, and, um, uh, of course, one of my more, uh, i just backtrack a second, one of my more, my more well-known classmates from College of Marin, way back in college, uh, who I, I mentioned to you that we'd done this production of, of The Taming of the Shrew, Western version that we took the Edinburgh Festival in 71. One of my, uh, one of my roommates then, and who was in the production, roommates when we were over in Scotland, uh, somebody you probably know of well, Robin Williams. Okay. Um, and uh, anyway, so we've known each other for 40 years, 40 plus years. Um, and anyway, so Juilliard, the acting company, and then working mainly in theater for for most uh, regional theater and New York theater. 
for about 20 years. Um, a couple of films in there. My first film, feature film, First Born, Michael Apt had directed and had a number of young people in that. Uh, uh, well, Terry Garr was in it and Peter Weller. But whose fil- first or second film it was, including uh, Cor- the late Corey Heim, um, uh, um, Sarah Jessica Parker, Robert Downey Jr., um, and that was, I was, had a great part in that. Anyway, uh, uh, in 88, you know, that I was doing a play off Broadway. I actually replaced, uh, the original actor for a period of time and performed Frankie and Johnny the Claire de Lune opposite Kathy Bates for about two months. Uh, and then, uh, they did the production with Kathy and the original actor, Kenny Welsh, out here in LA. I came out and offered to stand by, be a cover for Kenny and see what life was like out here in L.A. for me. I never pursued the television thing. And it was quite, the water was quite warm. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent about three months getting my act together back in New York, and my uh, significant other and I traveled out here together in 89. And I've been pretty much in L.A. since 1989, doing mainly um, guest starring on television and uh, feature films, Um and still theater. I actually was co-founder, uh, founding member of a theater company here in Los Angeles, and I was heavily involved with that as a producer and actor for uh, about 13 years. Um, and um, that's kind of uh, kind of it in a big nutshell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and 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 the voiceover stuff, the voice acting stuff, the voice actor stuff, as in the game, really came about by chance with the first, uh, the original StarCraft. Uh, in 97. Um, so how did you get involved with um, StarCraft back then? Well, back then, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> video games, excuse me, I had a little bit of a throat thing here today. Odd, now a voice person, I got a little th- throat thing. <laughs> uh, they, uh, uh, the video games, you know, weren't covered too much by, the, the work in video games wasn't covered too much by the unions back then because the video game industry was so new and it just was popping up and everything was moving so fast and the advent of the internet and so on and so forth and, you know, it was just really rapid growth here. So faster than what the unions could catch up to it with. And uh, there weren't specialty areas yet in casting and stuff for video games. And I actually, casting director who knew me uh, called my agent, my theater, TV, legit agent, and, you know, asked me to come in and audition for this and something else, too, which I can't remember what the other thing was. And then through that, and, and, and they cast me, obviously, I, was, I played Arturus Mask and in the original, and, and I did a couple of other uh, video games whose names I don't remember right now. Uh, <laughs> I think could've... Diablo was one of them. Well, that no, that was later. I'm speaking right from the get-go. Right in '97, right. there were other video games not associated with Blizzard, with other companies that I did, and I just don't remember those names right now. Um, yes, I did Diablo two uh, two years later, which about also about the same time, I guess, maybe a year later, I did uh, uh, Brood Wars, the expansion set. Mm-hmm. We well, yeah, I out. just wanted to wrap it up by, by saying how I got into it, I, and I kind of left it. I didn't do any follow-up with it. I, I didn't follow video games and stuff. I had really no idea, uh, um, you know, um, how big a hit StarCraft was and how desperate the fans were waiting for the next version to come out. Uh, and wow, you look back at the, uh, uh, the the thing that was out there with the original StarCraft and wow, the difference, you know, I mean, but it is 14 years and wow, the technology has just changed, you know, as you know, it's phenomenal how fast and how fast it changes nowadays too. So it's like a whole different experience, but I really had no idea, no concept of how successful a game and how sought after a game StarCraft was and how people were out there just chomping at the bit waiting for this game to come out. So I was quite flattered and thrilled when they called me and asked me to come back and and do our tourist mix. So in the interim, since I did those games and these other games back then in the late 90s, I also did a number of um, episodes of an anime series called Trigun, Mm-hmm. Um, for, uh, the, for when they translated and, and, and dubbed in the uh, English American version words and stuff, I did. A friend of mine was was organizing that, and I went to work for her on that few things. So I've done a few other things over the years, but nothing, nothing big. So 
uh, and and didn't really and never pursued it either. So that's one of the reasons why I don't have it, any record of it. I never pursued it. I never went after it. I never sought to get auditions for video games and stuff. Uh, and now I am. So if anybody's out there listening, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the work. Um, uh, so anyway, when they called me, you know, two years ago, called my agent, said, "Is he available to come in and do this, the sequel? Come back again." I said, uh, yeah, great, 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 great. And I, I, you know, there are only, you know, probably there are only two of us from the original game, um, still in the original game. Uh, um, I'm, I'm guessing that possibly the original Zeratul might have been in it, but he's the actor sadly passed away, I guess, some time mm. ago. So they had to replace him. Um, but other than that, it's myself and, and Robert Clotworthy, and, and I do believe I'm the only one that they actually came straight away to and asked me to do it. I know we, you probably know, and Robert may have talked about this too, you know, he, I didn't know it, but he had to fight to get the part back again. Yeah, you, yeah, that was my next question. My question, if you were contacted by Blizzard, um, to voice Octoris Manx, cause, um, Robert told me that he had to fight to get back, um, to do Jim Rayner. Yeah. Yeah, he did. You know, which totally blows me away. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I can't imagine anyone else doing that. But you know, who knows? I don't know the guys well. I will say this: I mean, you know, I love everybody I've worked with at Blizzard, and and it was so great to work with Chris Metz and Ian and 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 all the folks. And um, they're just they're, they are a prime organization. Blizzard, the Blizzard people, the StarCraft people, uh, World of Warcraft. Yeah, all those guys and ladies, women too, lots of them, <laughs> all working. It's not just a guy organization. Um, uh, you know, they are all great to work with. But you know, it's it there there are artistic choices that go into matching a voice to a character, and and obviously, you you guys, the fans out there, you know, uh, you know, if you have the wrong voice, you're just not going to be as interested in that character. You know, so I like to think that obviously, uh, you know, I like to think that, obviously, I say obviously, that m I bring some, my voice brings something to Arcturus Minsk that they wanted, needed, and they wanted to do it again, you know. Mm -hmm. And that somewhere along the line, somebody out there, somebody for whatever personal subjective reasoning, because it is totally subjective, somebody in the mix of authority and deciding what gets done when and where, had second thoughts about using Robert's voice. For some reason, whatever reason, and, and totally subjective. Just one person's opinion somewhere obviously came in, came into play. Um, or, or with me, they actually didn't want me, but nobody else would do the job. <laughs> 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 That's a possibility, which I refuse to think about. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, who knows? I know from experience that being the bad guy on stage or in front of camera is a lot of fun. How much fun is voicing an evil emperor? I'll tell you something. I have such a good time with Arcturus. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Are you kidding me? It's great fun. Great fun. You know, and I... Whoever did the originals, I don't remember, and I'm sure it must have been one of the guys... Metzen or somebody there. I don't know that they had an outside director way back then in those early days. But you know, with StarCraft II, they have an outside director, uh, Andrea Romano, which Robert, might, whom Robert may have mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. And she's an Emmy Award winning director of uh, animated shows and, uh, and I mean, she's a multi Emmy Award winning, and mul certainly multi Emmy nominated, I think multi Emmy Award winning. Uh, in, in that field. Um, and, um, she made it, uh, not only fun. I mean, it's fun to do this stuff, but she's so good as a director. She's so in tune with what an actor is giving and she's in tune with what the, the, the producers per se, uh, of the piece are looking for. And she knows how to get the best out of an actor and get what they need out of an actor. And that adds to the fun of it. It really does. As a professional working actor, having a director that knows what the 